Welcome to the service for today. Can you believe it? This is the last of our pre-recorded services. Um, in terms of our planning at the moment, we transition to uh, live stream services next Sunday. And so this is the last of the pre-recorded packaged services. You'll still be able to watch digitally, but next week it'll be either live or a recording of the live event. I want to jump straight into the service today. It is a service in which we will be reflecting on our own personal poverty and God's grace and riches in response to that. The psalm uh, that we're going to share in now as a call to worship reflects on that dynamic in a very powerful way. Join with me as wherever you are in saying the bold words, either within yourself or out loud, that are on the screen now. This is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is seated on high? He looks down on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of His people. He gives the barren woman a home making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. We're going to continue now in worship as we sing together the great hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. with a prayer. Loving God, your, your love is far greater than we make space for. And it is your longing that we should make more space. 
for your love, that we would have open hands, come to you with open hearts, greater confidence. And I pray that the service would be a service in which and as a result of which we do do that. But right now I offer you and I pray that each one who is praying this prayer is offering you our gratitude, our praise, our worship, our adoration for your love that, that far exceeds our space even to, to hold and contain and receive that love. Your love is, is more than one person can receive and so you give it to to families to nations to the whole world and even all that exists the universe the cosmos is a reflection of your love we marvel we praise you we worship you on this day Come, Lord, and speak to us as we listen to scriptures now. In Jesus' name. Amen. So there are going to be two readings now. The first reading is about the birth-to-be of Samson to uh, a childless couple. And, of course, if you paid attention carefully, the psalm, Psalm 113, spoke of God giving children uh, to those who are childless and giving the barren woman a home. The second reading reflects on how Jesus invites us to a greater uh, openness to what God wants to give us rather than being productive um, uh, as we normally think of our lives and the importance of being productive. So he turns that a bit on the head. Uh, listen to those two readings now. Our first reading today comes from Judges, chapter 13, verses 1 to 5, and I'm reading from the message. And then the people of Israel were back at it again, doing what was evil in God's sight. God put them under the domination of the Philistines for 40 years. At that time, there was a man named Manoah from Zorah, from the tribe of Dan. His wife was barren and childless. The angel of God appeared to her and told her, I know that you are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and bear a son. But take much care. Drink no wine or beer. Eat nothing ritually unclean. You are, in fact, pregnant right now, carrying a son. No razor will touch his head. The boy will be God's Nazarite from the moment of his birth. He will launch the deliverance from Philistine oppression. Our second reading is taken from Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21 and 29 to 34. Then he told them this story. The farm of a certain rich man produced a terrific crop. He talked to himself, What can I do? My barn isn't big enough for this harvest. Then he said, Here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll gather in all my grain and goods, and I'll say to myself, Self, you've done well. You've got it made and can now retire. Take it easy and have the time of your life. Just then God showed up and said, Fool, tonight you die, and your barn full of goods, who gets it? That's what happens when you fill your barn with self and not with God. Now from verse 29. What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality. God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. 
The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. Be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourselves a bank that can't go bankrupt. A bank in heaven, far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers. A bank you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. Thanks be to God for his holy word. I am going to take you now into a very beautiful prayer that Henry Nouwen shared with us. It's quite a famous prayer and that's going to be the focus of the sermon today. It's a once-off sermon but over time, over the next number of months and even years, it will in a way become part of a series that I would like to call Great Prayers That Changed the World, and each time focusing on a different prayer. And so this is almost uh, the first one in that kind of series, and I think you're going to find this very meaningful. So the prayer that I want to pray now as I take us into the sermon is the prayer uh, of Henry Nouwen that we will be focusing on today. Let me lead us in prayer. Dear God, I am so afraid to open my clenched fists. Who will I be when I have nothing left to hold on to? Who will I be when I stand before you with empty hands? Please help me to gradually open my hands and to discover that I am not what I own, but what you want to give me. And what you want to give me is love, unconditional, everlasting love. Amen. Henry Nouwen knew that he needed to pray this prayer. He knew also that many of us would need to pray this prayer. That line, who will I be when I stand before you with empty hands? Who am I if I've got nothing to, to offer, nothing to bring, if I'm empty or feeling empty? This, this prayer invites us into a spirituality of coming to God with empty hands, with nothing to offer, and everything to receive. This is an important spirituality that this prayer invites us into, and, and I hope you will hear the invitation well and respond well to the invitation today. I do confess that this aspect of spirituality is overlooked by many of us, and I think myself included in my own preaching and teaching. And so, although this spirituality doesn't tell the whole story, it's an important part of the story, and I hope you are able to take it to heart. Jesus knew that we needed this as part of our relationship with God, and there are a couple of places he he encourages this in us a couple of times that he takes the opportunity to teach this. One of them is this reading today where Jesus reflects on those who view life from the productive uh, angle, as it were, in what we can produce, what we can achieve. We, we achieve something, we build a barn, and, and then we say, no, no, let me build a bigger barn, let me build another barn. And so we go on all this productivity, and we may even say the productivity is for God, and we have a lot to offer God. Um, but Jesus is saying, no, you know, there's something else that's important, and that is about coming to God, about receiving from God, and being open to what God can give rather than what you are bringing. Rather just come with empty hands, open, empty hands. So it's a call to trust, it's a call to surrender, 
and and I think that that's very 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 important and it's good for us to be reflecting on this today I never met Henry Nowen I suppose of course not uh, but I do want to say I had what I would like to call a close encounter with Henry Nowen. So the story is this. In my first congregation after ordination, which was uh, Seapoint Methodist Church, our organist's son, he had an adult son, who was a trapeze artist. And he was part of a group called the Flying Rodleys, who were a traveling group. Uh, trapeze group troop that traveled Europe and the Henry Nowen link comes in because it was that exact group the flying Rodleys which included the son of our Seapoint Methodist Church organist who were a trapeze group that uh, um, Henry Nowen had gone to see and were, he was completely amazed at these people flying through the air over the net. Uh, the grace, the freedom, the confidence with which they flew. He, he kept going back to their performances. Then he introduced himself to them. They became friends. They remained friends. They invited him to come with them and travel with them, which he did for a while. And while I was at Seapoint, it was then also that uh, Henry Nowen had died. And a manuscript was put together by uh, our organist's son, and I was able to see this manuscript, um, which spoke of this relationship uh, um, that Henry Nowen had with this group. And, 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 and I want to share something with you from that, because uh, it's really at the heart, it presents for us a beautiful picture that's really at the heart of the spirituality we're talking about today. Uh, Henry Nowen, in talking to Rodley, uh, they were the flying Rodleys, so a number of them had the name Rodley in the troop, uh, spoke to him about this, this flying through the air. And uh, Rodley said to Henry, you know, everyone thinks I'm the hero for flying through the air, but the real hero is Joe, my catcher. And Henry said, please tell me more about this. Uh, Rodley said to him that Joe, the catcher, does everything and I do nothing. He in fact said to Henry, the secret is that I must do nothing. I must just fly through the air with my hands out and my palms are open and Joe is the one that must make all the split-second decisions and catch me out of the air. In fact, the most dangerous thing I can do is to try and be caught or to try and catch Joe. I could break his wrists or my wrists could get broken in, in the process. All I must do is nothing. Joe must do everything. The catcher does everything. The flyer does nothing. And therein is a picture for this part of spirituality that, that we have complete confidence in God's competence. Like Rodley must have complete confidence in Joe to catch, so we must have complete confidence in God to catch, complete confidence in God's love for us and how that is enough and how God in God's own way can be at work with us and through us in this world. Can you take that picture to heart and can it awaken within you and me a place that says yes life is very very difficult at the moment but I am entrusting myself with all my brokenness and openness to God and I'm putting my confidence in God to do all that's really needed to be done. I think that's very important and, and very, very powerful. Come with me now as I take us to our Bibles and I want you to see how 
in our Bibles there is this rich gold vein of this theme that says God is most powerfully at work with those who have nothing to offer and all they can come is with open hands. Um, it particularly comes out when one sees how God used childless couples in God's plan. So a childless couple is, is, is really the epitome of what we are talking about, of somebody who's got nothing in their hands to offer, just comes with openness and trust. And then God does the rest. God does God's work. So I mean, quite remarkably, when God decides to give birth to a new nation, uh, the, 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 God's plan of a chosen people, God doesn't look over the world and say, let me find uh, someone who's got a big family. That's a good start. Ordination. No, he looks for a childless couple, Abraham and Sarah. You can read it from Genesis 11 onwards and chooses them to, to give birth to a child and uh, Isaac. And so the story is able to start. When God's looking for someone who he's going to raise somebody up to, to a battle against the Philistines, he chooses a childless couple and that's our reading, and Samson was born. Uh, the great Samuel, who was this great spiritual leader and prophet and judge, uh, leading the people of Israel through the transition from the time of judges into the times of kings, time of the kings, he was born of Hannah. And we have a very special Hannah that's just recently been born in our own congregation. We'll tell you that story uh, at another time. There's a testimony very relevant to what I'm saying right now. Jesus' own precursor, John the Baptizer, was born of a childless couple, um, Zechariah and Elizabeth. So, so God has done some of God's greatest work through through childless couples, the very epitome of the open, empty hand. So this is very important in terms of God at work and very important in our relationship with God. And so what I want to do now is to give you a way to build this into your life. And, and so it's almost like saying to you, these are the practices that will help. Obviously this prayer, and I encourage you to take this prayer into uh, your prayer life for a while and to remember it and come back to it every now and again. But these practices also will help you with this spirituality. The first one I want to say to you is don't let the clay become hard. Don't let the clay become hard. And what I mean by that is the clay of your identity. It is one of the uh, projects in our life to develop our identity. But what we develop in terms of our identity as people, um, as individuals, is, is very much the project of our ego. And, and, and so God will need to change some of what we have developed. And so what I'm saying to us is don't let the clay become hard um, in terms of your identity so that God can't change you. Uh, because what happens then if you do let the clay become hard is that you then defend your identity. You say, this is who I am and I can't see life any other way than who I am. That is a closed fist. That is not an open hand. That is not a responsive uh, position, stance with which God can work. We, we need to still allow God to be the potter and us to be the clay. Any other stance would be a closed fist. And as Henry Nouwen so powerfully in this uh, uh, prayer calls for and prays for that we will be able to open our hand. As he says, I'm so afraid to open my clenched fist. But don't let the clay go hard. The second thing I want to say to you is enjoy the Sabbath day as a weekly reminder of this open and empty-handed relationship with God. The Sabbath day is a very precious gift to us. And as I've said before, the Sabbath day is this remarkable day in which our relationship with God 
becomes deeper through us doing nothing. <laughs> you know, we're literally told to do nothing, just rest. And in this non-activity, our relationship with God improves. And in you building that into your weekly life, so you are building this constant reminder that it's not about what you accomplish. It's not about the barns getting bigger and bigger. It's, it's about just being open to what God may give when you do nothing. And if you're doing that weekly, then this is able to be folded regularly into your relationship with God. And it can be a constant reminder of this important dimension in your spirituality. Next I want to say to you is it's okay if you haven't got it all together. Uh, we can get very much caught up, particularly I think in our modern uh, Western lives, but many other cultures also, about having it all together, um, you know, um, and, and this spirituality saying it's okay if you haven't got it all together and actually also reminds us of how fruit will come through broken ground. In fact, ground must be broken for something to sprout up through it. And so what's more important than having it all together is our surrender, our trust in God, our openness, and even our empty hands. I want to also say this to you. Christ will never be precious until we are poor. Christ will never be precious until we are poor, aware of our poverty, aware of our need, then Christ is seen to be precious. What we often think of in our relationship with God is all that we have to offer God, all our resources, our abilities, our talents, our gifts, our time, and, and we've got this all in our hands and we're offering it to God. And, and that is good, but it is a problem if that hides our need for God because ultimately there is a poverty and need within us and all of those things that we think we can offer to God and do for God can hide that and this is also where Jesus is saying let's take the focus away from these big barns um, and just uh, attend to being open to God. Well, let me make this clear in Henry Nowen's life. Henry Nowen was a very successful author and academic. He became a professor in his 30s already. And from his 30s and 40s and 50s had a very successful academic career, including being a professor at Harvard and Yale, the two great American universities. When he was, as it were, in the human eyes at the height of his career, he had this sense, this call from God to leave his academic professorship at Harvard and Yale and go to a small community in Canada that were looking after severely intellectually disabled people. And for Henry Nowen to go and look after an intellectually disabled young man and to become the chaplain of that community. And so Henry did respond to that call and went, that prompting from God, and went. And he looked after a young man called Adam. And Adam didn't know that Henry was this great professor and author. Adam couldn't even read. Henry was called to look after him. Nothing Henry had experienced in life and all that he had that counted in his favor counted in his favor in looking after Adam. In terms of looking after Adam, Henry was poor. He had nothing to bring. Nothing equipped him for it. And it was within that experience of his own poverty that he came to experience Christ's riches in a very special way and, and opened him up as a person and some of his best writing was done within that context. And so there's something very important to appreciate there in terms of our own view of our lives and the call to openness and empty hands in that way of coming to God. So I want to say to you, it's okay to come with empty hands. 
It's okay to be aware of your spiritual poverty. In fact, Jesus made it a beatitude, blessed are the spiritually poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The spiritually poor is the person who says, I owe God everything, but I can give God nothing. God owes me nothing, but yet has given me everything. That's a good, important awareness. So friends, Henry Nowen knew he needed this prayer. He had a hunch. Other people would need this prayer also, good hunch, and so shared it with us. And so as I close the service, I am going to pray the prayer again. And I trust and pray that this has been meaningful for you. Let us pray. Dear God, I am so afraid to open my clenched fists. Who will I be when I have nothing left to hold on to? Who will I be when I stand before you with empty hands? Please help me to gradually open my hands and to discover that I am not what I own, but what you want to give me. And what you want to give me is love, unconditional, everlasting love. Amen. Friends, God bless. So, one notice I want to share with you. Great news. Next Sunday, our services begin here on the property again. And we are so super excited about this. We are actually going to be offering four services. A half past seven and a half past nine morning service, English. And then a vernacular service at half past eleven. And an evening service at half past six. You do need to register for the services. So please go to the website to do that. Um, as you can understand, there are a whole lot of protocols and you do need to register. But we look forward to seeing you uh, in the services. I want to take us into the offering now. On the screen is appearing the details for you to do the offering right now. But let me encourage you, even if you're not giving right now, but you're giving perhaps um, at other times in the week or other times in the month, Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all the ways in which you have helped us survive uh, this very intense lockdown. Of course, COVID-19 is with us still and we are still needing to be disrupted from it. But um, thank you so much for how you have kept Trinity Methodist Church going. I'm going to pray a prayer now loving lord uh, this is a prayer of gratitude uh, there has been so much generosity so many people saying to themselves how can i help support my local church so many people that have also been reached who have started to give in, in new ways and in digital ways so many people who have been keeping money aside for when they can come back to church and to give it then. And so for all the ways in which this has very clearly been the work of your spirit, we offer you our gratitude, our thanks and our praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. We have this treasure from the Lord our God, a gift of mercy from His hand. His all-surpassing power at work in us to show His glory and His plan. For He has offered hope to all mankind through sending Jesus to the cross. And now this light he shone into our hearts, we're holding out to all the world. Now with his power in us we'll reign in life, with eyes of faith we'll move ahead. The Spirit helps and strengthens us each day, confirming our eternal place. 
Our confidence is not our ability, nor in the earthly strength that we hold. But in His grace He takes the fragile things to show the greatness of His love. We will sing out, we will proclaim the wonder and joy of His endless grace. Drawing us on till Jesus comes again to take His people home. No longer living for this passing life, we'll fix our eyes on what is sure. There is a heavenly place prepared for us that will not ever fade or spoil. So we will walk the path He has given us in full obedience and with faith. For when the road is tough, we will not lose heart, but keep on trusting in His name. We will sing out, we will proclaim the wonder and joy of His endless grace. Drawing us on till Jesus comes again to take his people home. We will sing out, we will proclaim the wonder and joy of his endless grace. Drawing us on till Jesus comes again to take his people home. To take his people home. Let us pray. Father God, creator and sustainer of the universe, as we enjoy the beauty of spring and signs of new life in nature, we are aware of your love and provision for us. We rejoice in the green shoots of life, on the trees and the songs of the birds. We rejoice in the anticipation of being able to worship together again and for the life of the church to bloom and flourish. We rejoice that the rate of COVID infections is decreasing and the authorities have seen it fit to allow more economic and social activity to take place. Lord, we are aware that the Christian witness and ministries of the churches in South Africa have been severely curtailed under the lockdown. While the physical and spiritual needs have increased dramatically, so the ability to meet the needs have been curtailed. Churches are having to find new ways to be effective, using decreased resources. Lord, our nation is in desperate need of healing and reconciliation, both with each other and with you. We pray for a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit, and revival in the churches of our land. May we become the light and salt you have called us to be. We pray for all who are fearful of the future and pray that we may be strengthened by your assurance that after darkness there will always be sunshine. Lord and Master, we will trust you when the storms of life are raging as well as when the sun is shining brightly. Help the churches in South Africa to face the current situation with courage and knowledge that you were involved in the past, you are involved in the present, and in the future you are there. Lord, we pray for the frontline workers who are working hard to save lives. We pray for our nation to be delivered from the scourge of gender-based violence and child abuse. Lord Jesus, as we celebrate Youth Month, we thank you for showing us that in your kingdom everybody matters. Help the church and our leaders to understand that young people and children have a role to play and a contribution to make. Father, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We don't know what the future holds for us but we know that you are God. 
who holds the future in the palm of your hand. Your mercy is new every morning, and on that we depend. Amen. So we come to the end of the service and we're going to share in the benediction together, which is a blessing at an ending. And I'm very conscious that uh, for now, at least, um, this is the end of a, a significant season that we have had of these pre-recorded services. And so with that in our hearts and minds, we share in this benediction together. Uh, please participate in whichever way feels good uh, for you to participate. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.